Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show. KOE on Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. Just several more days left with you, and the Joe Miller Show will be sayonara. I've enjoyed it. It's been a great trail with you all. We're going to talk a little bit today still about the Hillary Clinton scandal. U.S. spies, I mentioned this last segment, they're horrified by that email scandal. It's not just a lot of people say, hey, this is all about making a, a political matter out of something that's very minor. In fact, if you talk to the Hillary people, hey, it was just a slip up. You know, it, it, we just we used a personal server it was for convenience. Uh, the stuff that we put in there, okay, maybe there were some classified markings, but no big deal. Not at all. Not true. First of all, American intelligence believes that the Russians and the Chinese both probably penetrated her server. That means they probably had access to it. And, of course, we mentioned last week that the information on that server included information that was beyond top secret. But here's the real deal. According to intelligence professionals, a number of of super secret programs have been compromised. And as a result of the assessment that likely her server was compromised as well by foreign intelligence, one, and this is uh, from the story we put up today, intel officers responsible for those programs must be alerted. Two, once alerted that the program was mishandled, it's prudent to end those programs. So in other words, you got to alert the people that were involved with it, and then you got to end those intel programs. And then, of course, terminating covert actions ends up requiring a new plan. You have to come up with new sources. You have to remove uh, the various officers from where they're at. I mean, this could have a huge and comprehensive impact on American intelligence efforts overseas in particular, and especially in the Russian-controlled areas as well as China. So having major repercussions in the intelligence realm and for just to skate on this, as it appears the Obama administration is getting ready to do, when you look at what General Petraeus did compared to what Hillary did, there is no comparison whatsoever. General Petraeus, yes, he screwed up. Nobody's going to defend what he did. But comparatively speaking, his mishandling of classified information compared to what Hillary did, he had stuff in his drawers. Uh, There's no evidence that the Russians or the Chinese got into his drawers in his home. And, yeah, he did some other bad stuff. You know, had an affair on his wife. I get all that. But as far as compromising national security goes, what Hillary did is 100 times worse than what Petraeus did, and they convicted him. And yet he's not getting indicted. The White House makes the comment just the other day that they aren't going to indict. This is out of control. And it's why people have this jaundiced view of justice in this country, because those that are powerful don't get touched. Some may say, well, Petraeus was powerful. Well, Yeah, he was, but then didn't play ball with Obama. And that's part of the explanation here is that he refused to testify to help Obama. I mean, that's the the sideline story that may likely have happened. It may be why he got convicted to start with. But people like Hillary get to skate on all sorts of stuff. I hope the American people don't let her do that, though. They ought to know that this is a serious situation. Now, she's out there double speaking. I mean, she she talked just the other day about how she takes, this is a quote from her, I take classified information seriously, end quote. Of course, she's lied a half a dozen times or more about what she's done with her server already. But for her to say that and view uh, the contrary evidence, I mean, the press ought to just be hammering her endlessly over that. Of course, the White House, it's up to no good in all sorts of different areas, not just in covering up for Hillary, but as well as that Facebook gun ban. Talked about that the other day. Facebook is now banned at gun sales. You know, there have been a number of Facebook pages in Alaska that have been very effective in gun trade. I don't know whether you've heard of it or not. Fairbanks Guns and Ammo, of course, there's some down in Anchorage as well. And Facebook's decided that they just don't want to be part of that, apparently. The White House was asked if they had a part in the ban. The White House is refusing to respond because it would reveal the nexus between Obama and Zuckerberg. And then you wonder why Facebook is actively involved in filtering what you get online. And yes, they do. It's a private entity. It's huge. But keep in mind, if you're depending on Facebook feeds for your news, it is being manipulated by Facebook without any question. And I can prove it just based on our Facebook. There are, and of course, we don't know what the parameters are that Facebook uses, but Facebook page owners can tell what stories end up getting trafficked to their followers and which ones don't. And when you see a correlation between certain unpopular stories from the left perspective and the fact that they aren't getting trafficked to your followers, that makes you wonder. Anyway, it's a real concern, and Drudge mentioned this in an Alex Jones interview several weeks ago, that social media's dominance of news coverage and news communication is a real danger to press freedom, to basically 
First Amendment freedom. It used to be the Internet was moving into increased democratization of news. And now with the dominance of social media actually creating filters that you don't even see on what you get from your feeds, it's having an impact on what kind of news you actually see. What is the answer to that? Well, go to the sites that you trust. Now, don't depend on the social media feeds to get your news, but actually go directly to those sites that you trust to provide unbiased news, news that you believe or that is important uh, to your political decisions, uh, to where we're headed as a country, how you ought to be active. One of the things that's getting a lot of coverage everywhere on sites, social media, et cetera, is this Zika virus. A lot of people put it aside, oh, you know, it's just like Ebola, you know, it's overplayed, it's not a big deal. Well, it's creating near panic in South America. The panic is expanding now to Central America. It's been found there and in Mexico. To the extent that Alaska Airlines took an unprecedented step of making fee waiver changes. In other words, you can go if you've got a, a ticket that you've purchased to Mexico or Costa Rica. Because of the Zika fears, Alaska Airlines has said you can change your ticket. There's no cost associated with it. U.S. scientists are, are warning that Zika, given how rapidly it's spread already in the southern hemisphere, has, quote, explosive pandemic potential. And, of course, the problem, the, the, the most direct problem is that it's creating, for women that are pregnant, defects in the children that are born, smaller heads, smaller brains. You know, there's efforts right now to create vaccines, but it's clear that the vaccines aren't even going to be ready for testing until probably two years in the future, and it may be as much as a decade before a vaccine is publicly available. And, you know, there's word out that scientists have used genetically engineered mosquitoes or are trying to to fight it, but... There is a contrary view, and this is if you go to JoeMiller.us and look at the story today, Zika virus outbreak linked to the release of genetically engineered mosquitoes. There are some that believe that it's, in fact, those genetically engineered mosquitoes that created the problem to start with. Anyway, just another thing to take a look at. We also put up a story about Alzheimer's. There's additional evidence that Alzheimer's is transmittable. Scary stuff out there. Another story that you might want to take a look at, we're wrapping up this segment. Children bombed, burned alive by Islamists in Nigeria and Syria. Unbelievable what's happening overseas by these radicals. Teen just got charged with supporting ISIS, now also charged with his elderly neighbor's murder. Take a look at those stories at JoeMiller.us. We'll be back with you tomorrow. More great news and discussions, 2 to 4. See you then.